So we've come to the darkest corner of the fungarium to show you the dyer's polypore under UV light. <laughs> you might know that lots of the dyes that we use for our fabric come from plants. But did you know that fungi can be fashion influencers too? Let's, Let's dig, dig deeper. deeper. So we're here in the fungarium to talk about fungal dyes. These are dyes that are that can be made from fungal fruiting bodies. So fungi produce a whole range of colours and we have some really lovely examples here. These were donated by Mrs. P. D. Livermore and you can really see the range of colours that fungal dyes can produce from uh, purples to kind of greens and blues um, and some beautiful yellows and reds. So this really lovely uh, yellow colour here is produced by a bracket known as the dyer's polypore or Fialis schweinitzii. And it can actually also produce uh, this really lovely dark mossy green colour here. It's known as the dyer's polypore because it can produce a range of colours from, uh, from yellows to oranges to these dark greens that can be almost black in colour. The dyer's polypore is a bracket fungus, so um, you might think of fungi and think of mushrooms. So they'd have a stipe and then on the top a cap. But uh, in bracket fungi, it would be growing like on the edge of the substrate. This is usually like a tree or something um, and stick out like that. It's also a polypore. So if you look underneath it, uh, instead of having uh, gills like a mushroom, it has pores, which the spores come from. So one of the really cool things about dyer's polypore is it is UV fluorescent, both the fruiting body and the pigment it makes, which I can try to show you uh, here, but we might need to go find somewhere a bit darker to get a proper, a proper look at it. So we've come to the darkest corner of the fungarium to show you the dyer's polypore under UV light. <laughs> so here in the dark, we should really see the effect of the UV torch. You can see it's causing the dyes polypore to fluoresce this yellow green colour. If I show you here, you can see where it was yellow. It's now like neon yellow green. So another specimen we have to show you today is that of um, Haplopilus nigillans. So these beautiful purple colours here are produced by a fungus called Haplopilus nigillans or the cinnamon bracket, which is a very unassuming little brown coloured, cinnamon coloured bracket, um, same as Phaeolus swanitzii, it's poured and will grow on the side of trees or logs. So this species uh, you can identify in the field because when you put a certain chemical known as KOH on it, it will turn a bright colour, either purpley red or violet. Most polypores, these are the fungi that uh, grows brackets usually and have these pores on the underside. This species, which um, is highly toxic. And so this is linked to the dye that it produces. Um, it has a large quantity of something called polyporic acid inside it. Um, and this is a compact pound that it might be using um, to uh, fend off uh, bacteria. So it's an antibiotic, but it also does lots of other things. But it happens to be really toxic in mammals and, and humans. So this, uh, this picture pigment works best on wool. Um, you don't get as good a uh, colour when you're using silk or linen. So these are lovely red colours that we have here. The red to orange colours are all from a group known as the dyer's quartz, um, a particular subset of the Quartinarius genus, uh, which is known for producing a dye which is the same colour as its gills. We have some really old examples from the collection. Um, so these are all from the 1800s and it's quite impressive that some of these you can still see the pigment that has leached out from the specimen onto the page around still there to this day. So we also have some newer specimens here that we collected last year um, which you can see their lovely colour a bit better on they've gone like a dark purpley red colour. Fungi have been known to uh, be used as sources of dye throughout history and across across the globe there's evidence from uh, ancient Mediterranean societies the Nordic countries indigenous groups in uh, Amer the Americas but generally a lot of the information is not super well recorded so there's actually a lot better records for the use of lichens as dyes uh, because they had a lot of commercial purposes uh, which we don't see uh, in mushrooms. 
That's right. And so we've been really lucky to borrow some specimens from Aaron over in economic botany. Um, and these are some jars of powdered dyes from lichens. Um, a lot of lichens uh, will produce uh, the purple dyes, which are so rare in nature. Um, so the cinnamon bracket is one example, but it's, it's not a common dye that you can get from natural sources. So they're very important for that. So the word purple actually comes from a dye. Um, in ancient Greece, they would produce purple dyes from a snail uh, called murex, and they would call that dye porphyra, um, which is the uh, Greek origin of the word purple. The lichens were actually the cheaper version of this purple dye because lichens were a bit more easily available and... Um, it's better for the snails. Better for the snails. <laughs> yeah, that was their main concern. <laughs> The lichens were more readily available and also the dye was not as high a quality because the purple lichen dye was not as colour fast and didn't last as long. I can show you some specimens of the lichens that we have in the collection here. This is a species called Rocalla tinctoria and it is the lichen that made the dye that we have in these lovely um, jars from Economic Botany. And the interesting thing about this lichen dye is that it's pH sensitive and it's the dye that's used uh, for making litmus paper. Mm. Um, so that paper that you use at school and you put it in like an acid or an alkali and it turns purple or red depending on, on the pH of the solution that you put it in. So thank you for joining us today here in the Fungarium and looking at some of our specimens. Um, if you enjoyed this, you might like some of our previous Dig Deepers we've done in the Fungarium. Um, and I hope you guys have a nice day. Bye. Okay. Thanks for watching this episode of Dig Deeper. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to learn more about the work that Q does, visit our website for more information.